You started already? Okay. Hi, Sunday School students. This is our first Sunday School video online, so please bear with me as we work out the kinks. Um, good morning or good afternoon, whenever you're listening to this. Um, I thank you um, for putting God first because God is so very important. Whether there's a virus going around the world or not, we need to put God first. He's above all. So I'm glad you're here today to listen to this video. Today's topic is, uh, or the lesson is, Jesus is betrayed. Jesus is betrayed. And all of the lessons that you'll be seeing over the next few weeks will be leading up to Easter, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And so we're learning about all the things that happen leading up to that time. And so what does betray mean? Now you're not here to answer me, so I'm going to have to give the answers myself. Or Chris, who is videotaping me, can give some answers as well. Hi. <laughs> so to betray someone really means that you go against their trust. So for example, if your friend betrays you, they might act like they're your friend, but then in secret, they might um, betray you. They might speak negatively about you behind your back or do negative things behind your back. They are betraying your trust or going against your trust. So that's what betray means. Most of you might have been betrayed, perhaps by a friend at school or someone you thought you could trust, but they turned out really to be the opposite of that. Well, Jesus, he definitely knows what it's like to be betrayed. He was betrayed by someone named Judas in the Bible, but also by all of his disciples when they deserted him when he needed them most. So we're going to be reading about that today, and we're going to be taking our reading from the book of Matthew. If you have your Bible, which I hope that you do there at home, take the dust off your Bible and take it out. We're going to the book of Matthew, chapter 26. We're we'll getting out of the trunk. <laughs> Natalia, if it's you, get it out of the trunk, please. Okay, and um, Matthew chapter 26, starting in verse 36. We're going to find out what happened to Jesus when he was betrayed. At this time, Jesus has already had the last supper with his disciples. We did that lesson last week. And at that last supper, he took the cup and the bread, and they represented his body and blood, and he shared them with his disciples. And they had that last meal together, and he said he wouldn't have a meal again until after he was in heaven. And so this lesson continues on from that one. In this lesson, Jesus goes to the Garden of Gethsemane. He's going there to pray. He's, he's in anguish. He's very, very upset. He knows what's about to happen and what he must go through. And so he wants to go and pray to God, our Father. And he takes a few of his disciples with him when he goes there. But something happens, and the disciples are not able to stay awake. Let's read from the actual Bible, because the Word of God is perfect, unlike me, who, who is not perfect and makes mistakes. So Matthew chapter 26, starting in verse 36. It says, Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. So Jesus is so upset, so sorrowful about what's going to happen. He asks his disciples to stay with him and to be there to support him. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. That's how we ought to pray too. Not our will, but God's will be done. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Could you men not keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. So he went back and saw his disciples were sleeping, and he warned them that their body is weak, that they need to watch and pray, just as we need to watch and pray. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, May your will be done. So he's praying the same thing a second time. He wants God's will to be done. 
He knows part of the plan for his life was for him to come and for him to die in our place, taking our sins upon himself. He knows this is all part of God's plan. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed a third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour is near, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Each time Jesus came back, those disciples were sleeping. They let him down. But Jesus, he never lets us down. The betrayer has come, and the betrayer is Judas, Judas Iscariot. He was one of the disciples, pretending to be someone who loved and followed Jesus Christ, when in reality, he was a betrayer. He was going against Jesus. And for 30 pieces of silver, he was going to betray Jesus. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the 12, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer, Judas, had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man, arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, greetings, rabbi, and kissed him. So not only was Jesus betrayed by Judas, he was betrayed with a kiss. A kiss is a sign of affection or a sign of welcome, um, but Judas used it in such a bad way. Jesus replied, friend, do what you came for. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scripture be fulfilled that say uh, it must happen in this way? You see, Jesus could have defended himself. Legions of angels could have come if he had wanted them to and would have defended him and rescued him. But he came to die for us. Being arrested, being betrayed, it was all part of God's plan. And so Jesus willingly, even though he was greatly sorrowed, went along with this plan out of his great love for you and for me. Jesus is arrested and he's taken away, even though he's done nothing wrong. And his disciples who were there with him in the garden, they all ran away, every one of them. They were all afraid and they deserted him. So not only was he betrayed by Judas, but he was betrayed by the disciples who loved him. They ran away and Jesus was left all alone. So when we're betrayed, when we're betrayed by friends or even family, we know Jesus understands and he knows what it's like. But Jesus went through all of this because he loves you and he loves me. And so that's what I really want you most to remember today. I know this was a long Bible reading, much longer than what we usually do in our class, but it was very important to think about what Jesus endured as we're leading up to Easter, as we're realizing his great sacrifice for us. It's so very important that you think about betrayal and how that must have hurt Jesus so much. And being arrested for, for doing nothing wrong, Jesus was perfect. He never committed even one sin. Never, but yet he was arrested and he didn't fight back because he knew this was all part of God's plan. So what I wanna do right now, which I didn't do at the beginning, was to pray with all of you. I wanna pray that God would protect you and that at this time when you're at home and you can't go to school and you can't go out very many places, that you would use that Bible of yours. Yes, you need to open that Ronnie, Justin, and all my other students who are watching and maybe even some children are watching who are not from my class. Use your Bible. God wants you to get close to him at this time. He's just there waiting for you with open arms, right? All you need to do is pray and read your Bible. And if you have a Christian family member at home, talk to them about the Bible. 
Dear Lord, I thank you very much for all those who are in the hearing of, of my voice. I thank you very much for Christopher's help today, and I thank you for this opportunity to talk to young people through the internet. Lord, I pray you forgive me for any mistakes I may have made in my speaking today, but God, your word is, is faultless, and I pray that your word would go forth to anybody who it needs to go to. And I pray your protection over every child, every person who's, who's hearing this video. And I just wanna ask you, God, to bless and help them. May their faith grow at this time. Terrible things are going on in our world all around us, but may our faith be strong. May our trust in you be strong. And may you bless and protect each and every one of us. And may we have another opportunity to gather here and to talk about you, God, next week. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember everybody, God loves you and so do I.